how to journal to change your life. My three best writing prompts for transformation. Hi, my name is Susie Porter and I've helped many women and I help women rewrite their lives so that they can create their happily ever after. Can writing change your life? Yes. <laughs> Whether we realize it or not, there are stories being written by our thoughts every minute of every day. If we don't take the time to write or journal or to become aware of these stories, these stories will control your life, I promise you. In his book, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, he describes his first principle as the discipline of perception. Now, discipline has never been one of my favorite words. As a matter of fact, I hate it. I've hated it as a mom. I've hated it as a person. I think because, I know, because uh, dictators and mean people use it to be mean, right? <laughs> I always think of um, fundamental, uh, what's the word, extremists who uh, use the verse, the, um, uh, what is it, from... Um, as Jesus as the shepherd, oh, don't spare, spare not the rod, like spare the rod, spoil the child. And here again, religion, common sense, the two can coexist. So I often thought of the gentle shepherd, Jesus, or any shepherd in any place on earth. If he took that rod and beat the shit out of the, the sheep, how ridiculous that would be. So discipline does not have to mean punishment. It doesn't have to even have any idea of being cruel, right? What it literally means is to teach and guide. The disciples were Jesus's best friends. He wasn't yelling at them all the time, okay? <laughs> discipline, that's a rant for another day. <laughs> so I like to think of discipline as like a string on a kite or the guardrails on the freeway, right? Discipline just helps us stay on track, helps us not die, right? Discipline is to teach and guide. So the discipline of perception, we've all heard so much about perception. Perception is reality, but what does that mean? Perception must be pretty important because smart philosophers and thinkers have been talking about it and write about, writing about it for since the beginning of time. Perception, perception is reality. That's the topic for another video. What is reality, right? What does that mean? Perception is reality. Jesus talks about in the Course of Miracles, Course of Miracles, how a miracle is a shift in perception. That's how powerful perception is. If we shift it, we experience miracles. I like what Wayne Dyer says that we see it when we believe it. Not I'll believe it when I see it, but we see it when we believe it. So perception is like faith, and perception is something that we can change. This is where journaling comes into play. When we write our stories, we can see who we think we are, right? And we can also see who we no longer want to be and what we no longer want to believe and how we can rewrite our story in a way that empowers us, inspires us, motivates us to take positive change, even if it's a teeny tiny little change, just a little shift in just a tiny shift in perception can bring a miracle. You don't have to turn around the Titanic. You just have to point it in the other direction, right? How many times we set our GPS, we don't get in the car, set the GPS, and then we're there. We set the GPS and it might take us five days if we're driving across the country, three days. The important thing is to, is to shift the perception, is to change the direction. It just takes a little step, right? It just, but here's how important that little step is. It requires willingness. I'll be honest. And for most of my life, I mean, I wasn't conscious of my unconscious beliefs. That's why they were unconscious, right? <laughs> but I guess I wasn't willing to let go of my painful story of my childhood. I don't think I consciously, intentionally wanted to be miserable. I think unconsciously, I was just terrified. To be honest, I was afraid. Um, I've been a writer all my life, and I wrote my first memoir when I was eight. It wasn't very long. <laughs> 
And in 2019, I wrote a one woman show called Wake Up Little Susie. And I shared uh, my deepest, darkest, most embarrassing, humiliating, shameful stories with total strangers in audiences in Los Angeles. And I got to say, doing that was super liberating, right? Nothing kills the spot like, like shame. So I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter if you've had a story stuck in your head for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, it doesn't matter how long you've been, that story has been creating your reality. You and only you have the power to shift it. When you take the time to journal, you can connect with the truth within you and you can find the answers to the problems that are in your life. Look, before you read another book or before you take another workshop, take time to get to know who you are. Okay, here's three prompts to get you started. Prompt number one, my biggest problem is, and then just write, stream of consciousness, vomit on the page, dump. My biggest problem is, get it all out, right? Now two, and I want you to push yourself here. I want you to open your mind. This is no edit. Nothing is impossible. Your imagination has free reign to fly to the ends of the universe, okay? Please give yourself this gift. Number two is, my wildest dream is, and then get it all out. Pretend you're four years old before you learned that things were impossible. Write what your wildest dream is. Everything and everything about it. Describe it in vivid detail. This part's going to feel good, right? Let yourself go there. It's free. It doesn't cost any money. You don't have to buy anything. It's in your heart. Give yourself permission to feel and to want and to dream. Dreaming is free. And the third prompt is, what stands in my way is, and then get it all out. I don't have enough money. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm not smart enough. Blah, blah, all those things, right? I'm not trying to diminish them. It's just that the e the voice of the ego will give you lots to write about in prompt number three. So my biggest problem is, my wildest dream is, and what stands in my way is. Now, after you've written your responses to these three prompts, let yourself reflect on how it all made you feel, right? Did you discover anything new? Did you get a deeper insight? Were you able to let yourself dream big? This is really important to notice. When you write about what stands in your way, look at what you wrote and question it. Is this true? Is this really absolutely true? And if it is true, if you do face some impossible situations or circumstances, what can you do right now? What one small thing can you do that will point you in the direction that you want to go? It could be something as simple as, I'm going to go to the library and get a book about whatever it is you want to learn about. Or I'm going to reach out to a friend and I'm going to ask to borrow money or whatever one little thing. I'm going to ask for help. I'm going to have an uncomfortable conversation. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to eat healthy. You know, whatever it is, you can, you can always do one small thing. Even if you're sick in bed, you can try to practice a, uh, meditation or visualization, you can do something in your mind if your body can't do things that you wish it could do right now. There's always something that you can do. Um, Amelia Earhart, who overcame tremendously impossible odds back in her day, she had written on the side of her airplane, always think with your stick forward, <laughs> which I thought was funny, right? Going towards the future. And it's similar to what Dr. Joe Dispenza always says, live from a vision of the future, not memories of the past, right? Unless you want to stay in the past, which I don't. And I'm guessing you probably don't either. Not really. To practice the discipline of perception is being willing to shift it. Jesus also says in A Course in Miracles that to experience miracles, we have to be willing to see things differently. That's also another way to look at when he said, turn the other cheek, when you turn the other cheek, you see it a different way, right? If you want to change your life, you have to change your perception. And if you want to change your perception, you have to get very clear about what your story is and the meaning that your story is giving you about who you are. 
your identity and your life. I lived almost my entire life with a victim story calling the shots in my unconscious mind. I never underestimate the power of a hidden belief. Writing saved my life, quite literally, writing and a sense of humor. <laughs> because it helped me see the truth. It helped me uncover all my unconscious beliefs. And it helped me tell a new story, a happy, strong story. And with that, I want to end with uh, one of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles. Lesson 91. I am not weak, but strong. I am not helpless, but all powerful. I am not limited, but unlimited. I am not doubtful, but certain. I am not an illusion, but a reality. Perception is reality. What are you perceiving today about who you are and about why you're here and about what's possible for you? Is it possible that you can shift your perception, that you can see things differently, that you can write a new story? Yeah, it's absolutely possible, but it's 100% up to you. When your desire to be happy and to heal and to be whole is stronger than your attachment to being miserable and sad and a victim or whatever your other beliefs are, you're going to get there. Whether you no matter what tools you use, no matter how you get there, that's what happened for me. My desire, I couldn't, I was like that, what they say in AA, enough is enough. I had had it with being depressed, miserable, angry, you name it. Like I was just done. So I don't know what your story is or what your bottom is or what your motivation is to rewrite your life. I just know that you can, and it's possible for you. And that is what I wish for you. That's that when you see this video, you take some time today to think about the story, your story. Think about what it is, how it's controlling your life. It might be a story from your childhood. It might be from your 20s or 30s. How attached are you to hanging on to that story? Is the reward of being a sad, innocent victim more attractive than the reward of being an empowered, successful woman? You get to answer those questions for yourself. I wish you love, power, truth, and every beautiful thing. When you wrote about my biggest dream is, I wish you that. All things are possible. What if that was really true? You have to be willing to see things differently and to shift your perception. God bless you.